All right, a little while ago I saw some uh, comments going back and forth um, on one of my studies where I talked about having to keep the commandments of God. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Let's, let's look at this. Revelation 14, verse 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, um, the argument was, how can people keep the commandments of God, meaning the Ten Commandments? You know, doesn't the Bible kind of speak against, against that? Keep your hand there in Revelation 14, verse 12, and go over here to Acts chapter 15, verse 5. We'll start there. It says here, But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. All right. Uh, so they're saying there in the first century that these Pharisees, and they're saying, you know, that these Gentile Christians are going to have to keep the commandments. Verse 6, And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Okay? Uh, but we believe that through the grace of, our, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So Peter makes it very clear here, they weren't keeping the law. But yet Paul in another place says, uh, as concerning the law, blameless. You say, wait a second. They couldn't keep the law, but Paul says he was blameless under the law. Well, think about it. If you go back to the Old Testament, they, when they would keep the law, there was a system within the law to sacrifice, to make an atonement, to have your sins covered, basically. Not paid for. That didn't happen until Jesus died on the cross. But they could be covered. So you could be, quote-unquote, blameless under the law. You see? In other words, you've sinned, go sacrifice such and such before the priest. They could keep the law, they could keep the commandments in that sense. But what Peter is saying here in Acts chapter 15, he's saying we weren't really keeping the commandments in the sense of never breaking them. And so the argument comes up, all right, Revelation 14, 12. They have to keep the commandments there. Uh, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, people say, well, how does that work? We can't keep the commandments now. Nobody could ever keep the commandments to be saved in terms of actually not breaking the commandments, I, understanding that you can keep them and, you know, under the law, being under the law, you can be blameless, like Paul wrote about. But let's just say the thing of keeping the commandments. How can you live in this time period and keep the commandments without breaking them? Okay, I understand the argument there. Well, first of all, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that we see through a glass darkly. All right, let me just say that. Uh, I'm not going to sit here pridefully and say, I understand that everything that's going to go on in the book of Revelation. It's going to be a different world. When the body of Christ leaves and those people, you know, I mean, think about the rapture. What is the rapture? The rapture is separating truth from error. I mean, literally. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Are we part of Christ's body? Yes. Then we are his representatives for truth. You say, well, that's just your opinion. We'll see. You see, at the rapture, those that were part of the truth, those who are truly saved, are leaving. The debate's over. There isn't going to be any theological debates, uh, Roman Catholic versus uh, Presbyterian. Or no, 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 no. No. Those that are saved are going up. The arguments are over. You see? The rapture is going to be a lot bigger than what most people think. It's going to be extremely, I think, the most significant thing that's ever going to happen on the planet. You know, and then the time of Jacob's trouble is going to really be bad. But the whole point is, life is going to change in that time period. Now, I want to make a couple points here. First of all, can we really right now understand what it would be like to live in that time period where you actually see God physically manifesting His power on the earth for seven years? No, we can't fathom that. Right now, we live by faith. Now, there's faith there. You know, the faith of Jesus, Revelation 14, verse, verse 12, you're still going to have to have faith in Jesus in that time period, but you're seeing God's judgment 
on the earth. So it's not quite the same thing that we have today. Now let me ask you a question. If you're in that time period and you knew I'm supposed to keep the commandments according to Revelation 14 verse 12, could you keep them for seven years? We're not talking your whole life. We're talking about seven years. See? And life is going to be very much different in that time period. You're going to be hunted down like a, a wild animal or something in that time. Uh, could it, would it be a little bit easier to keep the commandments at a time like that? Having fear knowing if I take that mark of the beast, you know, I'm going to hell. If I listen to that system, if I fall down and worship the beast, I'm going to hell. See? The lines of truth and error are going to be crystal clear in that time of Jacob's trouble. I shouldn't say crystal clear because there's a thing about, you know, uh, if it were possible that he shall deceive the very elect. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, I can't really understand certain parts of the book of Revelation. I can believe it, but I can't understand it. And I don't think any of us can really truly say we understand everything that's going to happen in the book of Revelation. Uh, we just believe. Um, that's, that's the whole thing of being a Christian. Uh, you say, well, that makes you look stupid. Well, then I look stupid. I don't care. Uh, good night, you know. <laughs> I trust the Lord. I mean, it's, hey, if it's, if it's something wrong in this book, well, it's, it's his problem. It's not my book. I didn't write the King James Bible, you know. And, of course, there is nothing wrong in there. There's, there's no problem there. It's going to make sense to the people in that time period. The whole Bible is not written to me. I get a little part of it, you see. I don't have a problem with that. My God is greater than just saying, I'm just going to write a book and it's just going to apply to anybody at any time. No, my God is greater than that. He separates and He deals with people differently in different dispensations. He dispenses His grace to people differently. Right now, I can't take a mark or take a implantable microchip or something like that that will damn me to hell forever. But they will in that time period. And I believe, true too, another thing there, in context, Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11 is talking about the mark of the beast, taking that, worshiping the beast in his image, I believe that that's the main commandment of God that's going to be there. Don't take the mark. You see? Now, can you do that for seven years? Well, it'd be rather difficult, but you could do it. Yeah. You could keep that command of God. So, you know, I think what's really going on here, this, this thing of Revelation 14, verse 12, the question is a very good question too, by the way. I really, I love questions like that. Um, and it's a very thought-provoking. Uh, how can you keep the commandments when people in the Old Testament couldn't keep the commandments? Well, it's a different setup. Uh, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be like, un, you know, unlike anything that has ever been experienced. Uh, you're going to be a, label, a lot more able to serve the Lord in that time period because it's going to be crystal clear. You know, the, as a military term here, the lines of demarcation. Um, in other words, where's the enemy's territory? Where's the good guy's territory, so to speak? They're going to be very clear in that time period. Now, they, there's going to be great deception as well. I know that. But if you're saved, I think that you're going to be able to keep the commandments much better in that time period. Um, do I understand all that? No, I don't. I don't understand exactly how everything's going to work out. I know that I'm leaving, and the body of Christ is leaving before this time period comes. Um, I'm not worried about seeing the Antichrist or seeing the mark of the beast or having to take the mark to, be, to buy or sell. Not worried about that one bit. Um, does that mean I go along with the cashless system that's already being set up right now? No. I try to pay with cash as much as I can. Uh, try to tell people about, uh, you know, I don't do this cashless stuff. You know, I try to do what I can. Um, just my beliefs on that. So that's, that's how I would answer that question. Um, I think it's going to be a lot easier for them to keep the commandments in the future because they're going to see what the other option is. You know, God's wrath coming down on you. A little, you know, pretty strong motivation to keep the commandments. Uh, if it means keeping the Ten Commandments or keeping a lot of the commandments of, of Scripture, um, I think it will definitely be easier in that time because you know you only have to do it for seven years, actually less than seven years because the Lord shortens those days. So you know that you only have to do it for a prescribed amount of time. But secondly, um, you know, I think the main commandment that's in context here is the thing of just not taking the mark of the beast. 
and that it will be very challenging. I don't even understand what that's going to be like, not to buy or sell. You know, um, it's really going to be something else. Glad I'm going to be leaving beforehand, and you can leave too if you get saved. So that's going to be how I'd answer that question. A very good question. Thank you for asking that.